Hello, how are you guys, fellow equestrians? I am super excited about today's topic. And um, this is a topic that I've had a few people ask me about, but I just wanted to make this like an actual discussion because there are three reasons why your canter seat is not working. Um, and so I'm going to dive into those three reasons today. And I don't want to just like, you know, tell you three reasons and then, you know, disappear in, into the horizon. Um, there's three reasons that your canter seat is not working, but these are all things that are fixable. So I just want you to know, like, there's hope. <laughs> there is hope for you. Like, you can actually master this. Um, so, yeah, that is what I'm going to be covering today. And um, before I dive in, I know um, where I am here in Germany, it's, um, well, it's April weather, and it's, like, snowing and sunny and snowing, and I can't make up its mind. So if you are joining me live, then please, you know, comment in the chat and let me know where in the world you are watching from. And if you are having uh, sunny or snow or what, what's it like in, in the country that we're, where you're watching right now. So, yes, just go ahead and, and comment in the chat there. Oh. <sighs> I'm, uh, I'm excited about this topic because I, like I said, I got a couple of people, they messaged me and, and one of the ladies, she said, you know, I'm an endurance rider and I, I ride a lot. I ride like five hours, you know, in the saddle, but I'm mostly trotting. And every time my horse breaks into canter, I don't feel comfortable because I just feel like, you know, I, I can't move with my horse correctly and like just things aren't working. And um, so, you know, I, I find that interesting, you know, I'm, I'm glad that she shared her story with me because I do see this a lot um, amongst endurance riders. Definitely. I've, I've definitely seen this, you know, I've competed some endurance as well, but also you see it everywhere. I see it with Western riders. I see it with, you know, dressage rider, like dressage rider. I see it, you know, so having your seat and having an independent seat, that's something that I'm going to be talking about. Is something that I think there's there is an exact science to it, but not everyone knows how to find you know the correct um, kind of seat bones and whether or not they're doing it correctly. So the three reasons that your canter seat is not working. I'm just going to go ahead and, and dive into that. And again, if you're joining me live, you know, comment in the chat down below where in the world you are watching from. So one of the reasons that your canter seat is not working is you might possibly, probably, most likely, you're probably leaning slightly forward, okay? And I think a lot of people, they don't realize, you know, you might have heard the expression like, oh, if you look down at your horse, then, you know, it kind of shifts your weight forward. Well, it's the same when you go to canter, without you even realizing it, a lot of people, when their horse takes that canter step, okay, that canter stride, their instant reaction is to tip slightly forward. And it's it's a part of our reaction because it's the fetal position. But a lot of us might not realize that we're tipped slightly forward because it actually appears like we're um, almost straight. You know, it's like a very minute thing. Um, I want to say shout out. Hello, Venedra from South Central. <laughs> How are you, Venedra? Haven't talked to you in a while. So hi. Um, so yeah, you're probably, if your canter seat is not um, moving correctly with your horse, you're probably tip slightly forward. The solution to that is very simple. You have to lean back, okay? And if you are slipped uh, like a bit forward, then by leaning back, you're probably going to feel like you're like leaning really far back, like you're some kind of rodeo rider. When the reality is as a coach from the ground, you probably actually are correcting yourself so that you're more straight and your spine is more aligned. So even if you feel like you're too far back, I actually, as a coach, I prefer that you get a little bit too far back versus too far forward. Um, too far back is actually going to help your seat move with your horse a lot better. And it's going to help you to actually find those seat bones. And so, you know, there's like almost no downside to being slightly back versus, you know, slightly ahead. So that is one reason why your canter seat probably isn't working. The second thing is you are most likely blocking yourself. Okay. You're blocking yourself. So what do I mean by that? There are several body parts where if you lock those joints, it actually affects our seat. Okay. Body parts you might not even think are connected because you're like, well, that's my hands. What does that have to do with my seat? So let me just, I don't know if I can like point the camera or whatever, but if my hands are, let's pretend my 
you know, reins are in my face. But if my hands are, you know, moving with my horse, then obviously my seat and my body and everything is relaxed and I can actually move with that horse. But if I lock my hands, okay, if I lock them, and a lot of people have a tendency of kind of locking their hands very close to the crotch. And it's, again, it's part of that sort of fetal position, that reflex reaction. But if you lock your hands and you lock it, you see, like, I'm, I'm just demonstrating it here, but this is what happens on the horse. You, you lock yourself and you lock your hands. And suddenly when your hands are braced and locked, your hips can no longer move. Okay. So somewhere, some part of your body, there is a lock. It's going to be your hands. Maybe you're gripping with your knees. So your knees are locked. Maybe you're squeezing your horse with, you know, I don't know what, um, or, you know, maybe you're just a little bit tense, but something in your body is locked. So that is the second reason. And that is a very common reason that I see people and especially that first stride in canter. And when you're working with green horses, you know, a lot of the times if your horse won't go into the canter transition, it's actually because the rider during the transition is locked. So they're actually not allowing the horse the freedom to step into that canter, into that canter stride, because you know, it's, it's, it's emotion. Like there's a, a power and impulse behind it. They need to do that in order to step into canter. So if your horse is having difficulties going into canter, it's probably because you are locked somewhere. Um, and then what's the third reason that your canter seat might not be working? So the third reason, and I've kind of touched on this a little bit, is it's it boils down to relaxation, okay? So relaxation, if you're tense or stressed, then you know, you're gonna be, like I said, going in that fetal position, you're gonna be tipped slightly forward, you're gonna be locking your joints, like all of the above that I've just been mentioning, you're gonna be doing all of it because you're not relaxed, you're not breathing, you're not kind of moving with the motion of your horse. So, you know, having relaxation in your body is actually a huge part of being an athlete. I know that sounds weird. So when I say relaxation, I don't mean, you know, like throw it away and, you know, just be lazy and I don't know, have a, have a cup of tea on your, on your horse. Um, you have to be active and engaged. And if you do yoga, then you will see a lot of um, yoga like does carry over into riding quite well because you have to do the poses, like you have to hold the poses and have strength, but at the same time, not be tense. So there's a fine line when you're riding of having strength, you know, sitting tall or, you know, having some kind of energy behind it versus, you know, oh, I'm, I'm just being lazy and I'm all relaxed and, and I'm throwing it away. So those are some reasons that you can, um, that you probably are having a difficulty, a difficult time with your canter. And I just want to say a solution as well, apart from those things, which I just mentioned, is you also really need to, you know, I mentioned a few times, like your seat bones. You need to know what your seat bones are and where they are. If you're sitting, you know, too far back on your tailbone, then that's not where you want to be sitting. Um, and if you're too far forward, then you're actually sitting on that pubic bone that's also like very not comfortable and we're not supposed to be sitting there so you need to find your seat bones okay and there is a balance and if if you're sitting right now in a chair you know watching watching this video just kind of right now you know in the chair i don't care who's watching if you look like an idiot at, at work or whatever but just kind of right now like okay that that that's my tailbone okay that that's i'm not supposed to be sitting there and then ah that's that's where my seat bones are okay so that's kind of one thing you know even when you're in a chair and you're not on the horse like i want you to experiment like finding that spot and you'll kind of know it when you find it like it feels like that's where you should be sitting <laughs> so that's where you want to sit on the horse and if you have your seat bones on your horse and in the saddle you know, then you will be able to follow them and move with them. And I do talk a lot in the Speaking the Horse Language course. If you haven't already I've done the Speaking the Horse course, um, I do talk about that quite a bit because in order to have that connection or that oneness with your horse, you need to know how to follow them. And at some point when you've mastered following them, then that's when you can start influencing your horse to follow you. So that is definitely something that I, you know, I do cover a bit more in the Speaking the Horse. And I would definitely, I have a few exercises in that course. So if you haven't already joined, then in the comments um, or in the description somewhere, you're going to find, you know, the Speaking the Horse language course. So definitely go and check that out, especially if you are having issues with um, cantering, <laughs> with your canter seat. And yeah, hopefully you have found this video helpful. And if you 
you know, feel like you're having some, um, I don't know, questions or about this topic or other topics, just go ahead and in the chat or in the comments, just, just let me know, like, Hey, what about, what about this? And I'm, I'm, I love talking about these things with you guys. And so I, I love hearing from you and, and getting a lot of emails. I'm just going to try and find my my email for you guys. So again, yeah, you can comment in the chat. Just let me know if you have any questions um, or if you've had any similar situations, like when you were cantering, where you're like, oh, actually in the canter transition, I locked my my knees or my elbows or this or that. And, and just let us know because you know what? That's the first step to improving and to fixing it is actually figuring out like where it is and that's why, you know, having a coach on the ground or having a coach um, online or whatever, like that's why it's so valuable because sometimes it's hard for us to notice what it is that we're doing. And the second you have that formula and you're like, oh, <laughs> I was, you know, gripping with my knees or oh, my hands were, you know, here and, and bracing. So it, it does make a difference, you know. So yeah, reach out to me, send me an email, let me know if you guys have any questions. And super excited um, to have you guys join me live today. And yeah. Take care and I will see you guys in the next one.